so glad you that you decided to um, come alongside of us because we are a ministry of reconciliation um, and we are a ministry of restoration and renewal uh, we were birthed in 1993 um, and uh, we have actually uh, come to our 22nd year and so we invite you to become a part because this ministry is ordained of God and it's part of God's heart for his united family. You will hear in uh, much of our training heart to heart connection because when we connect to the heart of God, we are agreeing with him. God wants agreement uh, with his heart and with each other. So I'm going to just go over initially um, the outline of the training. And when you receive this, there are additional, uh, there are additional um, uh, information packets that go along with this. Uh, so I'm going to start with um, the training and the learning objectives. And before I do that, I want to just say that we really do want effective leadership in Women of Purpose. And not only women of purpose, we are men of purpose and young people of purpose because God intended us to be a family. Um, he did not separate us as women. But the women started in Portland, Oregon in 1993 because the women, we, we had been in training with women. I had been teaching women's groups for years and they wanted their own sharing group. But God had another plan which was bigger than what we thought. And that plan was to bring families together, united in love. And that is the theme of Women of Purpose, to be united in love. Not only do we unite together, but we also are united with every denomination, every culture, and uh, every status. So what we want to be and look like is the kingdom of God, because he created us all. We are all different, but we have the same father, and we have the same bloodline, and we have the same faith. So from that uh, introduction, I'm going to go into our outline for training. And then after this, what we will do is send you segments that you might be able to get so involved. Because Women of Purpose, Men of Purpose, and Young People of Purpose is a ministry that brings you to a place of belonging. A place of caring but most of all it brings you up to a place of love because one of the things that we that's part of this vision is God sends people to the ministry and no matter what their problems are their challenges their circumstances what they need to be delivered from um, to know God he said don't ever give up on them because when he sends them he means for them to uh, be molded according to his perfect will. So, let me just go into what effective leadership is. I'm going to use my outline here, effective leadership. If Number one, effective leadership is goal focus. Christ came to do the will of the Father. That was his goal. It was not a cause, it was a purpose. That's why um, our scripture is uh, Romans 8, 28. We are called according to his purpose. John 6 and 38 tells us that Christ came to do the will of the Father. Christ finished the work the Father gave him, John 17 and 4. Christ gave us a commission to do his will, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. An effective leader is goal Number focused. Two. Effective leadership develops a plan of action. Christ chose to develop disciples through um, uh, to love. John 13 and 1. Christ then sent those disciples to do the same. John 17, 9 and 19. Christ calls us to develop relationships through love. John 13, 34, 35. You will see that the thread for women of purpose, men of purpose, and young people of purpose is love. That's who God is. And that's who we are. And if we're not, we will become that way. And we train through love. We train in mentoring, and we train by living the life 
of the word. And that life we speak every day because we know that what we confess becomes our possession. So our words must be definitive. Our words must be spoken in love. And that's what women of purpose, uh, not only purpose is to do, but we do it. And Christ calls us, calls us to develop relationships through love. John 13, 34, and 35. Number three, effective leaderships, leadership builds relationships. Christ built relationships by going to people. John 1, 35 through 34 through 51. Christ built relationships by spending time with people. Mark 3, 13, and 14. Christ calls us to build relationships. Acts 2, 42 through 47. We're relational because Jesus Christ is relational. God is so relational that what he did, he created Adam and Eve for a relationship. He wanted a relationship himself. He created Adam, and then Eve came out of, uh, we call it the womb of Adam. And so relationships are very special to the Lord. You cannot even have an effective group unless you know how to have relationships with people. Effective leadership, number four, develops people. Christ developed fishermen into fishers, men, to fishers of men, Luke 5, 8 and through 11. Christ developed transformed people, Acts 4 and 13. Christ calls us to develop people, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. Number five, effective leadership focuses on the being led. Christ helps servants become friends. John 15, 12 through 15. Christ helped friends become brethren. John 20 and 17. Christ called us to lay down our lives for our brethren. 1 John 3, 16. Sometimes we don't understand that. We think, lay down your life. What does that mean? To lay down your life for your friend. That means the life that you live in the flesh, you lay it down so others can know God. And that's what friendship is. And that, that's part of friendship. We're going to go into that in more depth what, about friendship. There are three kinds of friendship. You have the friendship that is godly. You have the friendship that um, general friendship. And then you have a committed friendship. So friendships are developed. But there's a, a kind of friendship that you have with God that when you know him, knowing God is to spend intimate time with him. To not only talk to him, but develop a listening ear so you can hear what he is saying to you. And so we do that. We don't just pray. And prayer is one of the foundations of women of purpose, men of purpose, and youth of purpose, young people of purpose. Prayer. And we don't pray unless we know to pray the word. That's the first thing. When we pray the word, it does not return uh, to God vain, meaning that he hears his own word and he responds to it. So we need to know his word, not only to read it, but to learn how to live it. First we read it, then we ask the Holy Spirit to teach us to understand it and give us the revelation of it, and then we learn to live it. And when we live it, that's how we win people, not just by speaking it, but by looking and imitating Jesus. Number six, effective leadership shows people what to do. Christ showed people how to reach others. Mark 1, 16 through 20. Christ showed people how to minister to others. John 6, 5 through 14. Christ calls us to show others how to minister. John 13, 13 to 17. Effective leadership focuses, focuses on doing the right things. Christ focused on making disciples. Matthew 28, 19 through 20.
Christ focused on loving one another. And that is the theme that you will hear throughout this ministry. Loving one another. John 13, 34 through 35. Christ calls us to make disciples who love. Ephesians 4, 12 through 16. Number eight, effective leadership focuses on informal communication. Christ listened to disciples. Communication is really key. It's not a one-sided uh, discussion or speaking. Where even when you pray and communicate with God, you wait and listen for him to speak back to you. And he speaks through your heart. Your heart. You see, what happens is God is the creator. Jesus is the heart of the Father. It's the Trinity. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Father, the creator of mankind. Jesus, the heart of God, which is the life of the Trinity. And then you have the Holy Spirit who breathes life and directs uh, us according to the Father, Son, and His Spirit. And so you have these three that are working as one. That's God. And God is love. Christ listened to the disciples. Mark 6, 7 through 13, and 20 through 21. Christ spent pers sent personal messages to his disciples. Mark 16 and 7. Christ calls us to listen more than talk. James 1, 19 and 20. You will find when we get into the training of how to come together in groups. You will, first of all, you'll go into your group with thanksgiving to, to Christ. You will honor Jesus Christ first by thanking him for even getting you together. Then you worship him. After thanksgiving, you quietly repent of everything that is ungodly in you. That means you search yourself. There's a whole section on how to get in touch with God's heart. After you have thanked him, searched yourself for anything that's inside of you that needs to be fixed by God, then you pray. After you pray, then you begin to share the things that's on your heart that needs prayer. When you pray, Pray the word.